yeah, sorry, this external noise. Uh, so uh, <coughs> after quite some time, we are doing this session. Uh, the to topic is as usual, slightly provocative. It says how to lose less money. Uh, very negative people would say because, uh, you know, we come to the stock market to make money. And here you are talking of us uh, losing money. Uh, now, so that uh, looks a little bit of an awkward kind of topic. But there is a reason for why I've kept the topic. Anybody who's traded in the market will know uh, that it is uh, more often than not people lose money. We have uh, data or time to tell us. Uh, the reason I did this uh, was because, you see, um, in the last uh, for a couple of months, maybe in March, for instance, I've had a lot of feedback from people who have read, people who want to leave the stock market, uh, when I talk to them uh, either on DM or in any other clubhouse or spaces uh, sessions, the underlying thing is we can't understand what is happening in the market. That is what uh, the sentiment I noted. So I went around various clubhouse sessions and, uh, you know, spaces and uh, just was a listener. I was trying to find out what exactly are people doing. Uh, and I found that what these people were doing was what I was doing in my initial years. And uh, that uh, gave me success for some time. And then I was confused for a very long time. So I thought I'll do a session today. Uh, I don't like to advise uh, about, you know, uh, to sit on a pedestal and talk, you must do this, you must do that. But let me just uh, try to put some thoughts into your mind rather than me giving you advice, advice in that traditional sense. Uh, I'm no one to give advice, especially trading advice. On stocks anyway, I don't give advice. I just want to uh, bring uh, to light some things which probably people are not thinking, people are getting frustrated, people want to quit the market, people are staring at huge losses. And um, just this evening, uh, one of my... One uh, person whom I speak to regularly called me up and said he's made a two and a half crore rupee loss. And that gentleman is a very smart trader. Uh, two and a half crores is quite something for a guy who is about 27, 28 year old. So it uh, got me thinking as to, you know, this this is the latest I'm talking about. Just three, four days ago, somebody was talking of losses which were bigger than what he can repay. He had borrowed and he had made losses. That is one set of people. The other set of uh, issues are people who are successful have suddenly gone into, uh, you know, um, uh, a time where they are not, they're no longer successful, but they've lost their touch. So they are confused as to what to do. So in the next few minutes, I'll just try to push, push some thoughts through. Uh, nothing definite. And obviously, these are not uh, the be-all and end-all. This is just some a few thoughts which came to my mind. See, uh, when I put this uh, topic, how to lose less money, this came about because many years ago, when I was in the Madras Stock Exchange floor, I was a sub-broker trading on the floor of the Madras Stock Exchange, where one of the successful brokers told me, um, loss is a certainty in the stock market, profit is only a probability. Now, he was a very successful guy. Now, normally you'll expect people to encourage us, but he virtually discouraged me by this uh, statement. Actually, it is not discouragement. It is basically a truism that certainly you'll make losses. All will make losses. Only about 10 to 15% will make profits. So to that extent, that is a truism. That loss is certainty. Profit is only a probability. You see, um, uh, most of us, uh, most of the people over here, i field would have come in uh, 2020, uh, they would have seen uh, some uh, reasonable success in the first two, three, four months, and then spectacular successes as we go into 2021. And they would have thought that uh, stock market means um, you have to, you will make money sooner or later, because the failures which they would have encountered would have been very less vis-a-vis -vis the successes which they would have seen. I'm sure anybody who has uh, traded newly from 2020 March, April onwards, till say around 
uh, the whole of 2020 and 2021 and even up to uh, 2022 March, uh, they would have uh, tasted more successes than failures. Now, the problem is after 2022 March, things have changed. You know, after 2022 June, things have changed again. And 2022 December, things have changed again. And then we have hit a rock bottom somewhere in March of 2023. Not in terms of the indices, but as much as in terms of the psychology. So today, more and more people are frustrated. And you're seeing a steady stream of people moving out. In fact, data tells us that, that. You know, the number of trades done are less on the uh, on the stock exchanges and the quantum of trade also is less. So clearly, people are moving away and um, people are losing heavily. People are getting into losses which they may not be able to pay through their lives. So that is where we are today. Now, just to if that, if uh, this wound or an open raw wound, if I can, uh, you know, make it any better is I too was a Robin Hood. You know, people call people who came in 2020 as Robin Hoods. Basically, people didn't know what they were doing, but they were making money. Uh, they knew, some of them knew what they were doing. Some of them knew the market and they were making more money first. So basically, um, people use a derogatory word like Robin Hood saying that these guys knew nothing. So they deserve to make losses. All of us were Robin Hoods at one point of time. I was a Robin Hood in 1991. So 1991 with whatever... I may have knowledge, experience. Uh, I was an investor since 93, uh, 1982, 1983. So I had about eight, nine years experience. I came into the market professionally. Yet for me, I was a Robin Hood because you see the kind of gains which you saw in 1991, um, say July, August to uh, till about April of 1992 was enormous. I don't think any Robin Hoods any time have seen that kind of uh, gains because uh, if you take the index sensex then from 1500 it went to 4500 which is three times within less than nine months whereas um, between 2020 march and uh, 2021 october uh, index has not gone up um, three times for instance nifty has gone up from 7500 to 18600 so we were the original robin hoods in that sense but then what happened after 2020 uh, 1992 april when harshad mehta was caught the markets crashed. We thought uh, markets will come back. So we bought on all declines and the market declined, went down by 50% within more than 50% actually uh, within a um, year. Uh, the Sensex hit below 2000 in April of 1993. Within a year, it went from 4500 to 1995 or something like that, some, say 2000. So whatever gains we had seen, uh, wiped out in terms of the index and we made huge losses as far as the stocks were concerned because we kept on buying on declines. And then the Sensex uh, came back uh, um, to its uh, same level of 4500 in 94. After that, it never reached those levels. We saw those levels only in 99 uh, when it crossed that 4500. That took briefly, even in 2004, May, it was, nine, it was still 4500. So 12 years, 12 years is time when we didn't know what was happening. So we were much younger then, we had just left off our jobs. Uh, we had lots of aspirations. There are a lot of good things happening all around us, but yet uh, the markets uh, troubled us for 12 years. And uh, here we are at 12 months and we are wondering what is happening and why should we be in the market. The point I'm trying to get at is markets, uh, you know, they have their own time frame. Somebody the other day said, sir, you said in March end, market will go up. Uh, on 27th March or something, he sent me a message. See, all, all thinking is bogus, a kind of thing. Because, you know, market has not gone up in the last week of March. But subsequent to what he said, until now, market has gone up uh, significantly. You will notice that. Between March uh, 27th, when from, say, uh, 16,800 to today, we are seeing 17,650 or something. So markets have their own time frames. We can only, uh, those time frames are not too long for us to uh, not make any money. We should make money uh, uh, by and large in the markets uh, uh, if we have some focus and also understand the market's own time frames. Um, so now, how do we lose less money? So some pointers, five pointers I would like to point one. The questions which we should ask 
ourselves is what Ramak Ramana Maharishi asked many many years ago. Who am I? Uh, are you a bull or a bear? See, uh, typically when you are, let's say, playing cricket, for instance, which is a very popular game, you are either a uh, left-hand batsman or a right-hand batsman. Uh, so there are people who are very attractive left-handers, uh, and most of us are right-handers. So even in the market, most of us are bulls. There are very few people who are bears. So let us say you are um, you are a bull, which, are, which means you are playing right-hand, um, and then you want to because the other guy um, is look very attractive shots are being played by a left hander then you try to go and play left hand I in, uh, sorry i got thrown out of the room uh, anyway so the point is uh, uh, you know uh, you you try to play left hand and then you will end up losing so you need to know whether you are a bull or a bear uh, and i think by and large uh, we should stick to that prakash are you able to hear me prakash Yes, Vijay, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. So, so yes. therefore, you should uh, first un uh, understand who you are. Because what happens is to be both bull and bear. And my experience is that it is very difficult to be both. So, it's better one should choose rather than... Yeah, what's wrong with my phone? Uh, so, you should choose uh, who you are. And I, I strongly believe that it's better to choose one. Uh, now people will say you'll have bear market. So, um, so what do I do in bear? There will be some bullish stocks in a bear market. You can go and buy into them. Similarly, if you're only a bear in a bull market, what do you do? There will be bearish stocks. It is just that you know you have to concentrate on your strengths. <clears throat> so that is uh, first thing. The second thing is, uh, what kind of markets am I comfortable with? You may be a bull or a bear, uh, but if you're uh, you and you should. Uh, no, in the market, you have day trading, swing, and long term. So you should, there are different techniques for these three different uh, types of market. So you should know where you are comfortable. You you decide you're a bull, you decide you're a bear, but are you a day bull trader uh, or um, day swing trader or a long term uh, trader? You can be a long term bear also. I've been in, in many stocks for three, three years. I have taken a long term short position. So that is the second thing which you should uh, do because what I'm seeing is, what I'm noticing it is that most people uh, whom I am encountering are not looking at uh, you know the long term and they're just getting into day trading. They think it's the same way of thinking as it is swing or long term. It's completely, completely different. I strongly recommend that you talk to some mentor who's experienced and try to align your um, trading strategy. Then third thing is, what kind of a market are we? Whether it's a bull market, bear market, or a sideways market. Two-thirds of the time, we are in a sideways market. So uh, you need to behave differently in a sideways market, differently in a bull, and differently in a bear market. In a bull market, if you're a bull, you can do trailing stop loss and ride it. Uh, in a bear market, if you're a bull, then you need to uh, look at short-term profits not look at you know uh, just uh, riding it sideways is that much more difficult then the fourth uh, important thing which i notice is am i with the trend see most of us including me when i say uh, i've noticed i am the biggest culprit many times i never identified the trend so uh, you know i'm thinking the, um, the trend is bearish so i'm shorting but the market is going up I'm not. I'm missing out that the trend is bullish. So one needs to, uh, you know, get a hang of whether you're in a bullish, whether the trend is bullish or bearish. See, today you have so many tools at your disposal, in terms of oscillators, in terms of, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, what shall I say, the indicators. You have uh, the Elliott waves, you know, Gan theory. So many things are available at your disposal which probably were not available to us long ago. Uh, so you can you can decide whether you are with the trend and you should be in the in line with the trend. That is one thing which I'm noticing again and again, people are missing that. Then you see, when you are selecting your instruments also, that is very important. See, you can be in a bull market, buy the wrong set of instruments, that is the wrong set of stocks, and then you know you will still make a loss. 
the classic example I keep telling is uh, thing about ITC. If you bought in 2013 for eight years, the market was bullish, but ITC never went anywhere. So that is another thing which you need to know. Uh, so therefore, what you need to do is, you see, once you identify that we are in a trend, then you go down and you uh, see which of those will feature in this trend. Let's say now we are in a bull market, if we believe. Then look at um, tech and uh, pharma till now. I have not participated. So no point in trying to go and buy tech and pharma. So, you know, or metals for that matter. So you need to uh, identify that uh, too. So it is not only the index, because when we talk of index, we are not trading the index. Most More often than not, we are trading stocks. So we have to be very careful in uh, what we mean it's a bull market or a bear market. Okay, so this is what my gyan is. Now, quickly I'll touch upon for about five minutes on the current status of markets. Uh, I have been uh, I have been exhorting people uh, that, you know, things are not as bad as they seem to be. Uh, why do I say that? Because uh, whatever experience I've had, when I look at it, I have seen all these things before. Uh, I'm sure many people have seen it, but I'm saying from my side, uh, I do not see any mm, problem in this market. Uh, it's maybe not going as fast as what we think it should go. But certainly, we cannot say it's a bear market. I also have mentioned as to why it is not a bear market, when it can be a, a market where we need to review. For instance, I said that Nifty below uh, 16,750 for about 10 days if it trades, then we may have to review our understanding of a bull market. And you see, uh, when you st you should step back, the problem with all of us, including me, I am the leader there, is that we are so hung up on the day-to-day -day activities or day-to-day -day news, information, CNBC, uh, Clubhouse, Spaces, all kinds of things where we are looking at day-to-day. -day. I think uh, one should just step back and see the macro top-down approach rather than just, you know, look at day-to-day. -day. For instance, you see, when uh, somewhere in November, December, people were all very bullish on India. People said uh, Tata's are putting so much money, they're buying so many planes. Uh, and uh, everybody says India's growth story is there for the next 30 years, 100 years, 10 years, all that. The markets were very high at that time, 18,300, 400, made a new high also in December. But you see, uh, subsequent to that, we have been going down, whereas the U.S. market, which is supposed to be under recession, is going up. So one should sit down and think, in March at least, I know the maximum pessimism happened in March by people. So I kept asking, telling them, ask yourself this question. If India is a great country, if you believe, and if you believe that uh, fundamentally we will get only better, yet if we are going to get, you know, the prices going lower, if we are the fastest growing economy, and we are considered the worst performing market in this calendar year. Is it an opportunity or is it a, a, a threat for your portfolio? The moment you, uh, the, you, you pose yourself this question, and if you strongly believe that uh, India fundamentally is good, uh, we are uh, growing, we are the fastest growing economy, things are all okay uh, at the overall level, but the prices are dropping significantly to multi-year low in terms of valuations, then you see your thinking will change. Uh, you will think of buying rather than getting afraid and uh, giving up your um, portfolios. A lot of people whom I know who are very experienced have given up their portfolios in March at the worst possible time because the markets never went anywhere in March. All because, you know, they had a fear that Adani will do something or I, I don't know what the fears were. Of course, there is a fear for Adani. There is a fear for so many things. But the prices were not telling us at that point of time. There's too much of pessimism in the market. You know, people even today, uh, they are unwilling to believe that we have a 700, 800 point rally. They believe that for the entire year, the rally will be only in this uh, zone. It will not exceed 18,000, for instance. Now, how do you know what will happen in the end of the year? Because just if you had gone four months ago in December, at 18,500, 18,800, they would have all thought you go to 20,000 by budget time. There were people talking of 20,000 by budget time. Now you are sitting here four months, you have been beaten, and then you begin to say that for the next one year or till the next elections, 
2024 elections, there will be no movement in the market. It has never happened like that, that there has been no movement. And especially in a bull market, it never happens. Bull market stabilize for some time and then they take off. Because as of now, we are still in a bull market because we have made newer and newer highs. So, you know, we get um, uh, influenced by these influencers who come and tell us the next 15 months, there will be no movement. Then there was one lady who said, next 10 years, there will be no movement in the stock market. Obviously, uh, you know, they may be rich, they may be influential, all that is there. But uh, it doesn't make any sense because that is not how the markets have behaved. Just because two months or three months or four months, the markets have done nothing, doesn't mean for the next uh, 10 years, the markets will do nothing. Especially when you believe that we are the fastest growing economy. Uh, so technically and fundamentally, I believe we are in a good wicket. And if you really look at it, uh, there is a stealth bull market going on in at least two sectors I can see. One is pharma. Um, you see, pharma has gone up 6% in the last uh, few uh, couple of weeks, which is huge because pharma is one uh, sector which was being beaten down badly. If you look at uh, CNBC or any, uh, you know, any um, mass media channels, you will never hear them talk about pharma. They, if you really hear them, you will think that there are only three blue chips in this country. One on the courses. One is uh, Nika, uh, one is Zomato, and uh, one is that uh, this one, or that Paytm. Because every single day, CNBC will talk of only these three stocks. They will not talk of other stocks like ITC, Tata Steel, TCS, uh, Reliance, Hindustan Lever. Those are not, uh, you know, mentioned by them. Uh, it's only these three stocks. And you will see maximum uh, number of people sitting in these three stocks. Uh, if you take the proportion of uh, ownership, uh, public ownership is highest in these stocks because the CNBC talks of only these three stocks. So if an alien comes into and listens or somebody listens to CNBC for the first time for one month and doesn't look at the stock market, they'll think three uh, blue chips in India are uh, Nika, uh, Zomato, uh, and, uh, you know, these uh, foodie stocks, all these uh, jubilant organ, uh, jubilant uh, food works and all that uh, uh, stuff. They think that that is how India will be. Uh, fully forgetting that none of them are in the Nifty or the Bank Nifty. So, we are seeing a stealth bull market in pharma and the private sector banks. Nobody is again talking about private sector banks, HDFC Bank or Axis Bank or ICIC Bank or Kotak. They have all now gone up significantly. About 7% they have gone up in the last uh, uh, you know, uh, two weeks. So, with this, I will just stop here. Uh, I what I want to conclude is that uh, please and uh, when you go do not lose hopes um, because there is no sign as of now that we are moving into a bear market. I also gave you a clear cut number um, what I think uh, should be considered as a bear market. Not because I am saying so. It is just that it is an intermediate bottom. The last intermediate bottom was on September 30th and the Nifty was 16,750. Recently, it has gone to 16,820 or something like that. So first thing is, you should know your numbers. Second thing is, you should know what kind of markets we are. And most important, you should know who you are. If you know these three things, by and large, you will not or you will lose less money in the market. And you will make uh, when you are losing and you will make more money in the market when you are gaining. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to throw open the... Uh, segment for a discussion uh, please uh, ask any questions um, uh, most most probably i'll try to answer everything unless it's specific stocks where i may find it difficult uh, thank you once again uh, pavan you asked a question about audio in fact i will i got thrown out twice i don't know why what happened uh, but i am assuming that others have heard uh, the only person i can test now is prakash prakash you heard everything Prakash? Oh my God. No. Amol? Amol, have you heard? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Amol. No, could you hear most of what I spoke? Or uh, was I not? Uh, Vijay, actually, there was uh, twice I think you went off here. Yeah, that's correct. But that was only yeah. for a few seconds, right? Correct. It was not correct. Correct. Right? Not that uh, the last 25 minutes I've spoken and nobody has heard anything. Not like no, that, no, right? no, no, no. That didn't happen. Oh. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Prakash, yeah. if you have a question or Amol, if you have a question, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I have nothing at the moment. I'll uh, just uh, say, listen. Yeah, fine. Thanks, Prakash. Amol? 
हाँ सर मैं एक्चुअली ऑप्शन ट्रेडिंग के बारे में पूछना चाहता हूँ कि मोस्टली ऑप्शन ट्रेडिंग में मोस्टली पीपल एक्चुअली ट्रेडिंग करते हैं और और ट्रेडिंग से मोस्टली पैसा गवा देते हैं एक्चुअली मोस्टली बैंक निफ्टी और निफ्टी में तो उसके बारे में आप किस तरह से हम इमोशनल कॉल को कंट्रोल करके फिर काम कर सकते हैं उसमें थैंक यू अमोल फॉर आस्किंग दिस वेरी रेलिवेंट क्वेश्चन आई आंसर इन इंग्लिश इफ यू डोंट माइंड माय हिंदी इज नॉट दैट ग्रेट एंड लॉट ऑफ हियर आर पीपल हु डोंट स्पीक हिंदी सो सी आई ऑप्शंस केम इनटू इंडिया इन 2000 एक्चुअली इट बिकेम पॉपुलर ओनली व्हेन स्टॉक ऑप्शंस केम व्हिच वाज इन 2001 uh do as a stock brokers we all appeared for the derivatives examination 1998 itself so uh, when we started options in 2001 let us say 2001 uh, there were very few people in the uh, options market india was mostly a cash market and to some extent it was a futures market but never an options market uh and uh, you know people like us had to actually educate uh investors as to what are options and how to trade in options uh, so we did that and i personally traded in options since december of 2001 now over a period of time uh, i have made uh, reasonably good amounts of money and lost huge amounts of money uh, because at the end of the day options is not easy it looks easy but it is never Uh, now i last 8 months i have stopped options because i am not able to understand this market recently people have now come you know hero and zero trades and people are talking of you know they're making huge money within one day or one week now weekly options have come when we started there were no weekly options only monthly options so we didn't have a uh, bank nifty at that time there only nifty so so i have gone through from day one you can say 22 years or whatever number of years and i've been very active uh, and i have seen that when we when we traded we always traded in directional options so we never traded the volatility today people are trading the volatility so there are enough number of people who have now become gurus in options who are taking seminars and webinars uh, and teaching trying to teach people on to play on the uh, not on the direction as much as they are uh, asking them to play on the volatility volatility basically they are looking at you know the implied volatilities and trying to uh, gauge as to how much volatile it will be and where you can make money and this thing about hero and zero which has uh, come um, has actually destroyed a lot of people see what has happened is if i tell people to buy a stock so the first question they will ask me is uh, what kind of returns can you get if i tell um them that you may get between 15 and 18% that's what i tell and invariably they will come around and tell me that sir what sir you are telling 15 and 18 recently i was talking to an option trainer he told me ask me what do you think that guy is about 6 or 7 years uh, into options he has become an options trainer so i told him that i am expecting 15% to 18% a year he says what sir you are saying like this i have option strategies which will give 15 to 18% in a month Okay. Now you see that guy is 25, 28 year old kid. I am already 60 years here. My experience in options itself is, uh, you know, nearly his age. Now, how do I tell that guy that it is not possible? If that was possible to get 15 to 20 percent in a month, how much does it come to in a year? Because Warren Buffett is the richest man in the world through the stock market. He gets 28 percent. Now this gentleman is going around telling. He is conducting uh, classes. a lot of people are joining that classes so what do i tell such people now i don't conduct classes uh, for options intentionally uh, i don't do that because i know how difficult it is to make money but if is if i keep telling people it is very difficult you can't make 15% in a month but they'll say see sir there is uh, you know what are those uh, uh, people actually put those sheets uh, for people to see on uh, uh, you know uh, on twitter or uh, on facebook or wherever or on uh, youtube now uh, it was very difficult for me because i know sh- surely yes, see in life everything is a probability in in trying to get 20% in a month is absolutely sure i am that that fellow will go bankrupt it's a matter of time how much time i don't know but he will go bankrupt but then uh, i myself have lost uh, quite a bit trying to take risky trades um, even though i know 
uh, that you know calculated risk one can take. It is not that you can't make money in options. You can. Uh, I made money for months together. But those are what we call purple patches. It just never. And also for that, I read a market ten hours per day. Uh, and yet I am not sure about how to trade the options. If I tell that to people, people say, "Sir, then you are old-fashioned or something like that." But it is just look at the numbers. Bujunjunwala, who is uh, the supposed to be richest, he is uh, CAGR was 23 percent. It is recorded CAGR on top of. This is all checked. So Warren Buffett is highest around 28 for 50 years or 60 years. No, now it may be 70, 70 years or something. So you can't get that kind of CAGR 15, 20 percent if you are getting the risks you take. Are enormous. People don't understand that. That is why you will have people calling me up and saying, "I made a two and a half crore rupee loss." Two and a half crore rupee loss is not a small thing. You are a 28 year old kid and you are making two and a half crore loss is not a small thing. So I am not taking any names, and I will never take anyway. Uh, people have told me, but I know this number is true because that person has told me this. So I don't know how to stop people. I would have only thought and prayed God that uh, you know the finance minister would have put some huge STT on options. Then you know it would have uh, reduced uh, uh, activity because options by itself is meaningless in more or more um, in a greater sense. It doesn't really. It is not really a productive activity. Futures I can understand because you want to hedge your portfolio. Options I don't understand. What is there accepting that you are trying to get an alpha on your portfolio? Even in the U.S. now you have ODT, uh, zero D uh, zero uh, D, zero. BTE, I think, yeah, zero day uh, trading uh, so something. So the same thing, zero or zero on the last day. So this phenomena is not new only to India; it is there all over the world. It is a thing which one should be, you know. I can't tell how to for people to get out of that what they're getting in. I see. I at least have got out. Last seven eight months, I have not done a single option. That's the only way I can tell people. Say, I am doing day trading. I am doing only in cash market. Just have a look at my day trades. Uh, you can make money by looking by doing day trading. So I put on every Monday, I put on my Telegram group, free group, to show people that you can make money day trading by doing uh, only cash market also. But that's all one can do. You know, I can't carry a stick and tell people. People they learn and they lose that kind of monies. So thanks some all for that. But uh, this is what it is. Yeah, I'm just trying to pull some people. Uh, if there's anybody interested. Uh, Please come up, uh, ask me a question. I will uh, certainly try my best to answer. Uh, Bhaskar, would you like to come? Or uh, DK? Or uh, Prasad? Mr. Madhava? I have invited, I think, Shri. Um, uh, yeah. Nakshepa? Khandelwalji? Aftabji? Yeah, and the money. Want to say something? One minute. Yeah. Okay. Let me just. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. Nakshebas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nakshebas. Before that, let me just answer Pawan's uh, question. Is bull, bull market need GDP growth? Where will GDP growth come from? What are the risks? See, Pawan, uh, GDP growth is coming, and now. We are seeing it in terms of taxation, in terms of uh, actual growth, uh, your IIP. You are seeing those numbers. So GDP growth is coming all over uh, from wherever it has to come. Uh, now risks, I'll tell you what the risks are to the growth is. One is, you see, there is a big political risk to this entire growth. Okay. So I don't want to dwell too much onto that. Just remember that there is some political risk. There is also a risk uh, to the growth in every year, which is like monsoons, for instance, will be one, or global economy if we are exporting. These are uh, some of the risks, known risks. Uh, so we are right now, we are okay. Uh, I don't think uh, we are uh, in really in any uh, bad situation. It will tell you, the market will tell you, if the, if the political risk is there, it will tell you. Right now, market is not uh, uh, concerned so much on the political risk. As far as the GDP, uh, this one is concerned, numbers are there, uh, and we are not uh, uh, we are not having any negative growth. So I think we should be okay. We may not be as good as what we want to be, uh, then, um, but certainly we are checking along much better than others. 
Ashish, I'll give you that uh, Telegram group. It will be there on my uh, profile here uh, or on my Twitter uh, feed. It is there. Uh, it's the name is Market Mirror is my Telegram group. Uh, I will just try to give you that. Yeah, Nakshebaz, would you like to say something? Yes, hi, and thanks for the opportunity, Vijayji. Uh, uh, so my question is uh, quite basic, actually. Oh, no, sir, so one minute, one minute. So, sorry, for, I'm not able to hear you properly. Uh, I think a little so, bit near the mic. And anyway, after a long time, you have come. Yeah, in fact, uh, thanks. Uh, is it any better now? Oh, yes, perfectly. Perfect. Oh, great. Great. In fact, yeah, after COVID, I was there online here for a long time. I've been I'm more busy with work. Well, good to hear. Good to be here and hear from you, in fact. My question is very basic. I, I have mostly been a theoretical researcher of the markets. I've not been a trader for much of it. And I actually have people in the family who are making good returns again. As you, you talked about this guy, right, who's making 18% and all. I mean, uh, I know some people in my extended family who are making good returns. But when I try to talk to you know to them that you know you cannot make returns without risks so i just thought i'll pick your mind in terms of what might be a good approach to talk to them as a theoretician you know when i give them ideas they give me a counter which i cannot counter sometimes they tell me that they're using strategies they hedged one long position is hedged by another short position which makes sense logically but i mean you can't possibly be making huge returns without taking something some risks that that you probably don't know no or you might be a wizard in the market. The second one is probably less likely than otherwise. So I don't know if I could pick your mind into how to, you know, approach a conversation like this. Or can I recommend a book which they might read or be enlightened or anything that you might suggest would be helpful really. Because I'm not a practitioner, I really struggle with this. Uh, especially when it comes to derivatives trading. Because it, it's certainly not my cup of tea. I do plain vanilla equity investing sometimes, but that's it. Yeah, uh yeah, thanks, uh, Nakshabaz. That's a very uh, relevant uh, question, and the, uh, the the that is what we come up. Uh, you know, when uh, if I tell somebody that uh, you know equity is risky, they'll say, "What do you know? Uh, you're all old-fashioned." Because some of my friends have made forty percent, fifty percent. So invariably, I turn around with logic. Uh, so I myself have experienced those kind of numbers. I don't want to talk about it because there is a flip side to it also. When I have lost, I have lost even those kind of numbers. Uh, that nobody talks. And so what is the, how do we actually uh, put forward our view in this? Is simply by pure logic and mathematics. See, there is one book called, I think, 99 Great Investors, written by uh, some Danish guy uh, who has uh, profiled 99 great investors. And in that, he has profiled two of India's investors. Uh, one is Chetan Parikh, his name. He's my professor at uh, Jamnalal Bajaj. Uh, I met uh, the gentleman. In fact, he only gave me that book. Uh, and the other is Junjunwala. That's where the 23% comes. So this gentleman from, I think, uh, Sweden or Denmark, wherever it is, uh, he has profiled these 99 guys and uh, put their numbers as to what their CAGR is. So their CAGR, I don't think anybody's saying more than 30%. CAGR. So if somebody says he has made 100% in a year, yes, it is possible uh, he has made. But to say that that is how you will trade in the market and make, that is, uh, the, I mean, that has not happened because it cannot happen uh, simply by pure mathematics uh, with the law, Warren Buffett at 28 or something, or maybe even less now, 26 or something. Uh, so you, how can you make 20% uh, per month, uh, which means it is 240% per year and you multiply it. You know, you have that old story about that uh, a guy, uh, the Sultan and uh, I don't know, whoever that guy was, this guy said on a chessboard, you put one grain of rice on the second, you put double and uh, so on and so forth. And you find on the 64th uh, uh, square, you will have to feed Egypt for seven generations or something like that. That much of uh, uh, wheat or rice should have been there. So it's like that. Compounding, uh, they say, is the eighth wonder. Compounding will show that it is not possible to get those kind of returns. Now, recently, I read another uh, lovely book called uh, Richer, Wiser and Happier. Uh, that's a lovely book uh, written by William Green. In fact, I interviewed William Green on uh, Clubhouse many months ago. He was very kind. In fact, I'm just thinking whether to bring him back. Uh, lovely book. Um, and uh, he, he's written about various uh, its biographies of various people. And again, he talks of, uh, you know, their investing styles and their kind of returns. They are not 
you know, they're good, but not like, they're not 50% CAGR. Nobody's having 50, and nobody, and nobody I know of has got more than 30% CAGR. And people who have got CAGR of those kind of things, like uh, Victor Nidrofer had, I think, 30% or something. Uh, Victor Nidrofer was the, um, you know, uh, part of the group of uh, uh, George Soros. Uh, so George Soros sent his son to Victor Nidrofer to uh, understand how markets function. George Soros sent his son. Okay, He couldn't teach his son. He said, you go to Victor. And uh, Trader Victor is what is called. He's written a lovely book called Education of a Speculator. And uh, Victor Nidrofer used to use very good in um, trading as well as in investing. But when it came to options trading, he uh, three times, three times he, he his account went bust. Three times. Why? Because he traded on the volatility. He didn't trade on the direction. So whenever you trade on volatility, this is what happens. Okay. So most people now are trading on volatility. They are trying to see in that day how much it will come. They're not looking at what will happen. In, I mean, where the market is going or anything. They're just not bothered about underlying what is happening. They're just looking at the option. I put it here, uh, put on stop loss there and put on target and this is happening. And that is taken on that whatever uh, VIX and uh, implied volatility. VIX itself is, I have proved that it is a bogus measure because VIX is not traded in India, unlike in the US. So, you know, VIX can be manipulated. Uh, and therefore, you know, you are getting an option premium based on VIX. And uh, invariably, you are getting sucked into something. With so many people getting sucked into it, it just goes haywire. Because everybody has their positioning in terms of strategy and that and this. And invariably, you lose. Because these strategies, again, they are, um, I've seen in uh, this one. See, I'm not talking anything here, theory. theory. I have experimented every damn thing. Even now, today I am experimenting with my mentees quite a few strategies. I tell them this will fail. This will not give you, uh, this will give suboptimal returns. But they are keen. They have the money. So I just go along. And uh, I have seen performance has been pathetic, to say the least. Okay. So, so therefore, if somebody tells me I am having strategy, iron condor, butterfly, um, covered call, bear put spread, and all that, uh, that is available in the book also. You put that on paper, you will know how it works or doesn't work or something like that. So so I have seen it. I'm saying as I'm talking to you, I'm, I have those strategies ready. I mean, they're not ready. I mean, they're in operation. I've talked to um, option traders who are having eight strategies, nine strategies. Believe me, they're doing it only for time pass. They're not doing for just getting any great gains. These are guys who have been, one of the guys whom I interviewed was featured in the uh, in the Jack Schroeder book of uh, these uh, uh, what is this, some success? I forget the name of the title. The new market wizards. He features in that. He's doing nine strategies. He's saying chilling. I have got nothing to do. Let me chill out with nine strategies. He's not uh, doing to get rich. He knows that. He's already a market wizard, incidentally. So I think uh, this is all you can do, Nakshabas, uh, and uh, leave it to their uh, luck or karma or judgment. And that what can we do? We can only tell that much. Uh, so I hope I given you enough uh, yeah, yeah yeah really thank you so much for for this detailed answer very detailed uh, two book references and that was the, the point on uh, wix was very interesting i'll check that out i'll, I'll probably yeah see wix, wix, see, wix so in the us wix is traded wix is traded in the us so it makes sense for them to talk about wix you know wix was wix was introduced by nse in 2014 nobody traded in that so much sort of frustration they stopped that People don't know this. People just don't know. <laughs> they, they, they think, okay, VIX is there. Everybody's talking of VIX in US, so I'm talking of VIX here. So I want to see what is the correlation between VIX and the market move. Is, there's no correlation. There cannot be. Because it is, if VIX is some straight static figure, you can you can do anything with that VIX. Anybody can manipulate that VIX. Anyway, that is that. Uh, Sri Lakshmi, you got something? Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening, uh, sir, first of all, I really need to thank you because many of the mentees who are following you did not give up on our portfolios. We stuck to it. And uh, though they were quite a bit drawdowns, but still we believe the market. It's all because of the way you tell us using numbers and history that uh, this is how it is going to be, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for that uh, encouragement, sir. No problem, Sri Lakshmi. Whatever little I know, I really want to share. I think you need to be a little near the mic. It's oh. like... Oh, okay. Yeah. Sir. sir, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, ma'am. 
Yeah, thank you, sir. Sir, one thing is that uh, you this time, uh, do you have any numbers to say that uh, the bull market may approximately come to this level or things like that for us to be cautious and uh, uh, not get into, I mean, uh, just book a bit of profit if that is possible by you. I know it's a probability, but still. Yeah. Uh, see, I, 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 I could hear most of it. I, uh, you are asking me to give some number, target, right? A little bit. Yeah, I mean, probably it may go to this level and where we have to yeah, be yeah. cautious uh, yeah, yeah. See, uh, of this yeah, yeah. bull market. Okay, okay, got it. See, you know very well, uh, yes, if I'm you have been attending my son, that I never give any precise targets. True, true, uh, true. But let me, let me, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. But let me just uh, try to give you some target which will look very ridiculous, okay? But I will, yes, I'll give a backup to that, okay? Sure, sir. Now, sure, people, sir. people, if you, yeah, uh, see if you, yeah. So basically, if you look at uh, 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 people, they'll say this year Nifty will go to twenty-one thousand. Somebody will say it will go to fifteen thousand. Uh, these are the guys who come on TV and they're called experts. Uh, and also, if you talk to your friends, they'll say ah, Nifty eighteen thousand two hundred this week, this month it will go, or some number they will give you. So I ask all these people uh, wherever I can, that, sir, you please tell me on what basis you arrived at this number. Should have some basis, right? Now you are saying you got a time frame plus you got a number. So, so I want to know how did you arrive at this number with that time frame? Till now I have not got any answer. Okay. Some of the people have tried to give me some answer by some using Elliott wave. Hmm. Elliott wave will not give you time. It will give you only price at best. Somebody will say Gan. So I will say Gan himself never made any money through stock market. He only made money by selling his courses. That is a fact. So they will say, no, 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 how can you say that about Gyan? We are Gyan Bucks. So I said, Bucks will always be like this. You will not uh, go back and research as to who this Gyan was. So Elliot Wave, I've gone to Prester, I have paid uh, in dollars uh, by this one and found out that their, uh, you know, analysis and all is as uh, good as yours and mine. Uh, so therefore, I go back to pure numbers. Now, if we consider this a bull market, now, please do not hold me to this number, but I will give you a logic and leave it at that. Now, typically bull markets in India have uh, have topped out between 26 and 28 P, P ratio of the Nifty when it was 26 to 28. The last one, which uh, in 2021, let's not go to what happened in 1992 when the P was 50 or in 2000 when the bull market was limited to only a certain select stocks or in 2008 when the P was 28. But that time, the PE was standalone and not uh, the consolidated PE. But of course, that time, you can say standalone and consolidated were the same. Now, the last time when we had a peak was in, uh, in uh, October 2021. That is the peak, I would say, not the one which we had in December. It was the, uh, where the entire market peaked. Okay, In December, nothing really happened. Uh, they just went to 52-week high in case of the, uh, the other uh, indices, like the mid-cap and the small-cap. So we had a peak of Nifty at around 28p, consolidated 28p. So today, where are we? We are at 20p. So if we are in a bull market, I am saying we can assume that we'll have a peak of 26 to 28. Because what is the 26 to 28? There is no magic in that number. It is just that, you know, uh, it, it, India's growth story is never, I mean, it never gone beyond that in the sense uh, the uh, year-on-year uh, uh, so on, uh, earnings per share has not grown more than 15% most of the time. Actually, this time it has grown 27%. That is why even though we are at 18.6 index we were recently, uh, the PE was only 21.5 or something like that. Now we are at around 20. So one can say uh, just by past experience of PE, uh, price earning ratio, we should peak out, we should be uh, we should be careful between 26 and 28 uh, P. There is nothing which says it cannot go to 40. There is nothing also which says it cannot go to 24 and turn around. But this is how we have seen in the past. That, that's how it is. It's like saying sun will rise at 6.30. Sometimes sunrise must have gone risen at 6 o'clock also. Sometimes you may not see the sun till 7 o'clock also. But this is just a uh, approximation. At 20 P, whether we will come down, I doubt very much because we have not seen that in a growing market, in the growing economy, 
no bull market has peaked out at 20. Now, many people may say it is not a bull market. That is a separate discussion. I am of the firm belief we are in a bull market for the reasons which I given. So, therefore, what I do is I look at, first of all, at uh, 18,750 or 18,800. Uh, uh, where, where is the, where is the worry? The worry is only if it falls below 18,750 for 10 day, 10 trading days. Then I'll say, okay, it is not a bull market. It is something which I have not understood it. So I'll stand by side. That is what I told everybody. Do not get afraid at 18,800 level. This is not. 16,000, sir. Sorry, 16,800. Don't be afraid. I keep telling people, don't be afraid even at 18,000 also. Don't be afraid. I will be afraid at only 26 to 27, 28 p.m. Right now, I am not afraid. Uh, for me, it doesn't. See, but also we should know what can derail the market. I told you political uncertainty can derail the market. You see, when you say political uncertainty, it is not only the BJP versus whatever. I'm not talking of that. It is. It can be many things. Let's say you have this uh, problem with uh, these uh, communal uh, rights. So if, let's say if the Middle East takes up umbrage against us, or if we do something and the U.S. takes umbrage against us or something like that. those are, I would say, I won't, I just put them as political. Actually, it is not exactly political or an Adani kind of situation when may pull down a market more than what we think it is. Or some recently that body, that other guy, or I forget that guy's name, uh, the uh, Hindal, not Hindal, uh, Vedanta guy. So those kind of things, I would say, uh, can uh, can make the bull market into a bear market. So those are things which we should be keeping in the back of our mind. You should not get afraid because of that. You should know that they are there. It is like, you know, when you're entering the forest, you know some tiger may be there. Nowadays, a tiger is coming to Mysore also. Okay. So you need to be afraid. Uh, my daughter says, uh, you know, when I visit her, she says, no, no, don't go to go for walking in morning 6 o'clock and leopard may be there. Some leopard was found in Mysore. So they're thinking that leopard is walking around uh, all the streets in my suit. It is not true. Anyway, but uh, leopards were there. So now you you know it is there, uh, but it may not be that it will hit you or it will come and, uh, you know, uh, my wife told me with leopard, you should do some exercise so leopard will run away. I don't know how far that is true because I will run away if leopard comes. So so uh, so you need to have one, um, uh, what can hit this market? One is, of course, a black swan event, which we don't know what is that event. Mostly known events. These are the known events which I have uh, put here. But I'm certainly not going to get uh, uh, afraid at these levels. It doesn't make any sense for me. See, now tomorrow they'll say Karnataka elections, what if BJP loses? Something like that. Somebody will uh, argue with me on that. I said state elections generally, the markets will only wriggle, but they will not collapse. Means they will, they may, there may be a correction, sharp correction may be there, but they may not collapse. But politics will uh, change the direction of market only in the general elections. This is what I've seen. Now, it will be the first time where if the BJP loses like this, then, uh, you know, the market starts falling and then people say 2024, some other party will come and therefore a bear market will start. For that, 16,000. I want to see that. I don't want to get into, I don't want to, I'm not a political guy. I mean, I don't have a political pundit. I can't predict how it will work out. Uh, the seats are not announced. The candidates are not announced. So how I can make a judgment on that? I can only say 16,000 is my refuge. So that's what it is. Uh, so I'm not afraid. I don't want people to be afraid because these kind of things have happened all the time. I tell people every single year from 1991, I can reel out 1991, what happened, 1992, you had Harshad Mehta, 1993, you had no confidence motion against Prime Minister, 1994, you had uh, some plague, 1995, you had MSU case, 1996, you had uh, um, Devi becoming Prime Minister, 1997, you had uh, Asian crisis, 1998, you had, um, uh, what is it? Um, um, uh, at, uh, our uh, nuclear blast 1999 you had Cargill War 2000 you had uh, what, uh, this one um, uh, dot com 2001 you had 9-11 so you can keep on going every year there will be a problem major problem as if the world will go to uh, land only I can from, the, from 2001 to 2023 also I can tell you but it's not worth it it will be boring but I'm just like, every single year there will be people say uh, today by uh, this uh, What's uh, our uh, RBA governor said? We are in living in very uncertain times. Un times are uncertain every single year. So I don't get afraid. That, I don't know why the people talk of uncertainty. Uncertainty is there every time. And I've seen bigger uncertainties. 1981, we were having only two months of, uh, two sorry, two weeks of forex reserves. So how you can say uh, now we are uh, our forex reserves are only eight months? Two weeks we had. Two weeks. 
so so we survive we will we are not we are a nation which is a very great nation we are i don't know how we can say like the 1990 um, um eight a uh, whole world blacklisted us <laughs> but we survived 1998 uti went us under 2001 people said nobody will travel by planes when that uh, we hit the world trade center people don't remember that so they will say some is last time war uh, ukraine war they said over uh, they said oil will go to 150 some people said so many things where it has gone oil has not gone to 150 they said dollar will go to rupee will go to 100 uh, rupee will go to 80 90 95 dollar will dx oil will go to 120 where it has gone they were struggling at 100 so oil is struggling at 85 so there will be always this fear and all mongering will be there all the time fear mongering see people want to make you make themselves superior they'll come and tell you see this will happen to you tomorrow you do this otherwise this will happen don't be in equity go into debt all that but you get better returns in equity when people ask you to do the exactly the opposite so don't worry on that we are not in that uh, zone if we are there i'll conduct on special zone and i will tell you where to be careful right now no need to be careful enjoy the three day weekend thank you sir thanks a lot bread i'm sorry i'm keeping you waiting but bread okay Yeah. yeah, hi. Long time, yeah, long you? time. You are also like Dakshin was once in a while. You are appearing. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? I am fine, Brett. I am fine. Good, good, good. So market looks to be uh, bouncing. I don't know. My voice is clearly audible or not because I am little away from the network. No, zone. no, no. You are, you are But, very uh, much uh, audible, Brett. yeah but this time to to me vijay i may sound little bullish but to me this time the recovery looks to be much more stronger because it is consistent for last 5 days and we don't see much of uh, you know ups and downs that we had seen in the recent past so if you look at the daily charts also it looks to be much much stronger uh, today morning yes there was a little, little drop till the time the announcement of uh, the the interest rates remaining same uh, the news was out at around i think uh, 955 and 10 o'clock onwards we saw the market almost trending in the similar line so uh, one thing for sure that the market is bullish uh, to me uh, i may be completely wrong uh, the time will tell however the the only concern area is how the geopolitics will play how this uh, oil cut uh, by by the opec uh, will will disturb in terms of logistic cost in terms of uh, supply chains and uh, number 3 i i really do not know what is going to happen to to uh, you know this time crop because uh, of the unseasonal rains uh, there have been a lot of disturbance across the country i have been traveling and i can certainly see that lot of crops have got destroyed and uh, therefore i have a little worry on the agriculture and related industries there uh, however suffice it to say that uh, the the negative side would be the uh, the the mix of uh, export and import because of uh, if the decision is not to increase the interest rates obviously the dollar will run further it will get more stronger it may have a little bearing on some of the sectors which i am sure the the learned speakers as well as listeners are aware of so these are the two cents uh, uh, from my side uh, vijay and any commentary from you is uh, always always full of wisdom yeah thanks brett i completely uh, uh, understand what you are saying about you know the unseasonal rains and uh, cropping patterns uh, un- unfortunately or incidentally see these unseasonal rains have become uh, <laughs> seasonal in that sense they come to um you know um what shall i say they are coming too often and becoming unseasonal so we have this uh, problem but i am uh, okay i suppose it all depends of course uh, how bad it is for instance people are talking of el nino effect and therefore monsoons are uh, getting into trouble and we can't have 6 7 years of good monsoon i don't know from where this 6 7 years so it cannot have good monsoon comes from today more and more uh, there is uh, irrigation facilities are happening so we are no longer that much dependent on you know the timely arrival of monsoon and moreover spatial distribution is very important in monsoons 
but i completely take your point see there are at any given point of time right uh, you you will appreciate that there are so many imponderables always we operate on that thing about dollar suddenly going or see uh, something uh, you know uh, china taiwan war for instance uh, so many things are there but i am trying to look at it slightly differently now this time say so, okay uh, let's say 6 months ago we are talking of uh, dollar strengthening oil rising uh, a nuclear war between um, uh, nato and uh, russia or a war between china and uh, taiwan slowly they seem to be receding in the background for instance today there was this uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia are meeting in China, and China is trying to broker peace between them. That's an amazing thing, I would say. They have never uh, done that before. So the there is that unipolar world is moving now to multipolar, I would say. So there is there are many other forces which are playing, and I don't know about this Ch- China Taiwan war really happening at all. These are all saber rattling, I feel. And I also look at you see today we talked of this. You talked of uh, interest rate. See the. the pragmatic decision was to leave interest rates alone because in india you cannot control inflation through interest rates maybe in the us is in not in india and there are no reason for them to raise it i think that it is correct thing by raising it inflation may still be high because i am concerned now milk prices have gone up today i believe we are the first time we are importing going to import milk we were supposed to be a land of milk and honey with cooperatives here there everywhere but we are sh- having shortage of milk which is a, a pity i would say so those are uh, things uh, the food inflation i don't think will come down so easily second thing i also believe that india is shining while bharat is crying and i stay in bharat i don't stay in india so those are concerns which are but then you know if you are a, a cold blooded ruthless guy you know the stock market uh, and uh, everything is uh, urban it is india whereas uh, people like us are sitting in bharat and uh, uh, of course we are also investing uh so so the eps of the world eps of uh, nifties uh, will all come from mostly uh, from urban india so uh, the uh, stock market will go up so we may have some issues about the urban rural divide this time more than uh, any other time in the last 20 years i feel having uh, toured uh, i'm sure you also toured i am also touring my state i'm touring and i'm seeing a stark difference there there is bharat is really crying in many many ways uh, india is of course shining you are having uh, vande bharat you are having express ways you are having airports being full and so many um, uh, the two wheelers are not doing well but the four wheelers are doing well so there are there is a dichotomy uh, so so what side of the glass or what part of the glass you look at also is important but i am able to discern that uh, uh, the urban india is where the uh, nifty uh, stocks uh, companies are there and they are doing uh, well uh, the ones which are rural facing or even uh, fmcg which are rural facing are not doing that well a uh, vmart is not doing well dmart is doing well but not as good but vmart is certainly not doing well and they are uh, mostly in bihar and uh, i think in the eastern parts of india so there is that uh, uh, see we certainly are not in that gango period a uh, goldilocks period where everybody uh, you know uh, we can go and uh, splurge uh, the stock market and take huge positions i don't think so i think it's a steady bull market see even in the 2003 to 2008 bull market we had so many times the market fell 15 20 30% we have not had a fall of 30% till now so we may have, of course on the broader market we have had not on the indices uh, so i think we'll go, go steadily i'm as bullish as you are uh, i think a steady growth is what may have, is likely to happen and it may go on for a couple of years also you see we may have some uh, road blocks surely we'll have it's impossible that we'll not have uh, like the karnataka election could be one uh, which i can see uh, then we don't know what else uh, can be there which we can only see these uh, so let, let's hope for, for the best at least but we should have the safety uh, you know safety lock as i would call it at 16750 uh, for me is safety after that i'll really get concerned i hope it doesn't come there right now it doesn't seem it will come there and you know one more thing which i wanted to add was see this part. completely right uh, and we in terms of percentage we had a fall of just 11% unlike any of the global indices if you try and compare it was just 11% drop yeah i am also shocked actually okay <laughs> i i will tell you in 2022 i made this annual prediction i thought nifty will come down by 25% in 2022 
and i thought uh, the broader market will come down by 40% normally the it is 1 is to 1 and a half so if nifty falls 25 i thought broader market will fall 40% now by may june nifty had fallen 18% uh, though bank nifty fell 20 in march uh, but the broader market fell 50% so that the, the second part of my prediction worked out but nifty did not fall so uh, so this is one of those rare bull markets i would say where the market, uh, frontline industry has not fallen 20%. So it is not a bull bear market at all, that what bearish phase it was. It was just a correction phase, one can say, by definition. But it is really very strong, which is very surprising, with no FI. So, incidentally, I want to tell you about P notes, which I've been very bullish on. See, that is why I think you are seeing FII investment trickling in. I expected this to happen from April 1st, when you know P notes will get activated. And uh, P nodes are a double-edged sword. They can, you know, make the market go up and mar the market when it's going to come down. So right now, I think uh, P nodes uh, will play a role, positive role in taking up the market. That could act as a good buffer, I feel. From April 1st, I think they are operational. Uh, we will not know how much of it is coming through uh, uh, the gift city and how much is coming through direct uh, um, the uh, Bombay and other places. But... Uh, P notes, I think, uh, have, will play a role, a big, big role, which many people are not looking at it. Uh, so, so uh, money. Thanks, Brad, once again. Hi, just just one observation I wanted to know that how much would you would you ascribe the reason for uh, tax harvesting done by people in the second fortnight of March and uh, Rebuying into the same scripts in the month of April. Uh, would you would you ascribe any reason there? Oh yes, 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 yes. People I know they do it all the time. I I know of course, and I know in this March also what all stocks my people whom I know have done ultra high net profit usuals is big time. It always happens. That's no, why I always how much, the last how much market. how much would you ascribe this as a percentage? Any any number comes to your mind? Just a hunch. No, Brent. What I look at it, I'll slightly. I look at it slightly differently because, see, I am a very small guy sitting somewhere in one corner. Okay, so I don't. There's no data available. But what I know is, uh, you know, I have contacts all around uh, the place and uh, generally know what they're up to. More important than that, I look at the the um, indices. What they're doing. See, I would have. I would have thought uh, that it will come to sixteen thousand seven fifty. That is what I had thought. That pressure of this. Uh, Tax harvesting will be so big that index will come down to 16,750 at worst. So it came almost there. It came to 16,850. So that is over now. So that is there. But now every year it increases. I don't know exactly percentage. But I know I know who all have, I mean, I know among my UHNI friends who all have done what. And they've done substantially. I'll tell you that also. Because there was enough loss for them to take. They took. They took those losses. Now it's over. They would have re, they're rebuying. So rebuying will be slow, actually. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vijay, sir. And uh, sorry, Mani, sir, please go ahead. Sorry to interject. No, no, no. No problem. Uh, Mani, uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Vijay, I'm Vijay. Yeah, yeah, very much, Mani. Okay, okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, Mani. And uh, at the outset, I would like to thank you for initiating this uh, clubhouse session today. And uh, today, our RBA governor had really surprised uh, most of us by not increasing the repo rate. And uh, suppose this trend continues for one more quarter, Mr. Vijay, any specific sectors will get uh, really benefited maybe by second quarter of 24, 25, 23, 24? Any specific sector that come to your mind? Yeah, see, money I mentioned, I don't know if we were there or not there. See, I mentioned, see, uh, what uh, there is a stealth bull market going on in uh, pharma and um, uh, private sector banks. Uh, of course, there is a, uh, a reasonably good bull market going on in the PSE indices the cpsc index so these three indices cpsc pharma see pharma and uh, private bank they've grow, grown up grow close to seven percent in the last uh, 15 days the seven percent is huge the index i'm talking about so and you look at today uh dr reddy has hit a 52 week high so these are uh you know stealth bull market i call so these are the two stealth bull sector three bull stealth bull sector one is the private sector uh um, uh, banks um, and one is this pharma and one is uh, PSC, CPSC. So I am very bullish on CPSC from quite some time. Uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, what I call the Atmanirbhar stocks. And pharma certainly, uh, uh, it looks very promising now. The, you, you forget the, see, you are a pharma man, okay? You know all about pharma. I am not a pharma guy, but I'm just looking at the numbers, the way the, uh, the structure of the chart is, and it gives great confidence. I mean, great confidence. The Divi's lab, or Reddy, or even your uh, Lupin and Sipla, uh, all of them had some problems recently. Sun Pharma, they look very interesting. Very interesting, they look. Of course, I don't know about this PPL Pharma, which I got screwed badly. Uh, that I have just, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's not doing anything. There could be some other pharma stocks like Biocon and all also may not do well. But these ones, I think uh, there is something brewing. And I better to latch on to those, I feel, and I latched on to some, some of them. Uh, Mr. Vijay, Mr. Vijay? Yeah, 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 kindly, yeah. Yeah, th thank you so much. See, regarding pharma, there are a lot of other reasons that are coming into play, not because of this uh, rate, I mean, rate uh, is not increased. You find a lot of green shoots in uh, many places in pharma sectors, okay? And uh, I'm, I just I would like to know whether certain uh, beaten down sectors like uh, real estate or uh, this uh, non-bank financing companies uh, will be benefited because of this uh, status quo of the right repo rate. See, I'm having a problem with the real estate per se. See, I'm not able to see that, uh, you know, uh, the kind of, uh, uh, what shall I say, uh, uh, green shoots. See, I'll tell you one one issue. It's a slightly very different. See, I am very bullish that these bloody P note buggers will do something. Some mischief will they'll do. Mischief is positive mischief. Okay. So, see, there are sometimes no. You need to factor some things which people don't factor. See, why they don't factor P notes? I'll tell you. See, P notes came into uh, being somewhere in the early 2000s, and at one point of time. 60% of the FII investment in India came through P notes in 2004, 5 and all. That. And they created so much of havoc that the SEBI got panicky and they started banning it or they started regulating it. Today, P notes are, uh, you know, nobody um, talks of P notes. Recently in the budget, this was introduced saying that they will come through the gift city, which means they will not come under SEBI. They will come through some regulator there. But the money has to come to Indian stock market only. There are no, the, the tax benefits are there. So P notes used to be regarded as Indian money going, going round tripping and coming back. So that was the, uh, you know, allegation against P notes for that reason. Uh, because so much of money came in the 2004 time. I'm telling you 60% of PFI money was through P notes, which is ridiculous. So now again, they have come back. Now, whether morally it is good, correct, wrong, I don't know. I don't want to go there. I'm only saying that there is one spigot of money which is going to come possibility because they they have allowed it in the budget the budget has passed recently and uh, the gift city is there and the regulators are there the formulations uh, the rule formulations are being done and they are not coming under sebi so i'm not taking a moral stand there i'm only saying that there is a good possibility that fi numbers will now start getting positive month on month on month on month till some months, I don't know, maybe six months, eight months, one year, I don't know. So what we were worried about, the FIs are leaving, they're not say, they're not buying in India, I think will change. This is my hypothesis. This I have checked because one is I have experienced myself, this in 2004 and all that. I know what all things they did. Uh, so I told you there is a positive mischief. It is mischief nevertheless, okay, because it's round tripping. But I'm not taking moral stand. I'm saying, okay, boss, if you're going to come and buy autos, for instance, you ask me sectors, no? I am telling you this. So I don't know which sector. They may say, okay, let's go and buy uh, index. Then what will happen to Reliance? What will happen to HDFC Bank? See, we all know, we people don't know that HDFC Bank now will become the biggest weightage in index. HDFC Bank and HDFC merger will make it the single biggest. That is 14%. Reliance is 10 So between Reliance and HDFC Bank, 25% of the index is sitting going to be there, weightage. So the, all they may do is simply buy HDFC Bank and uh, your Reliance. So maybe the Reliance and HDFC uh, twins today are active for the last one week. Have you observed that? So so something may be cooking like that. So these are small things which we need to look at and try to correlate with why the market is doing what it's doing. You see, uh, so, so some other sectors they may come. You see, I remember in 2006, 2005, 
where uh, they came heavily in real estate heavily uh, i know i used to talk to some uh, you know uh, what is this uh, rate uh, fixing what is it called crisil those kind of companies where those guys were willing to you know uh, looking for the fwa or fwa whatever it is and they'll pile on that's why you saw the dlf and all going up like that those days so that kind of uh, thing they may they may fancy some sector i don't know which sector they may fancy but that will be shown money i will tell you that when it happens right now i'm telling you i'm seeing some activity sitting in reliance and hdf sequence clearly there is some activity going on there otherwise suddenly this uc hdf sequence bank last for 3 4 days what's happening who will buy those stocks only these guys will only buy them. so we'll find out right now no mood is not mood sorry our focus should not be on bearishness keep an eye on the river rear view mirror don't get afraid is what i'm saying okay thank you mr thank you guys yeah bad boy ah uh, yeah bad boy kindly go ahead sir hi vijay hello bad boy hi hi how are you yeah fine sir okay okay do you know kannada i while i am a kannadiga but i would like this to be english because a lot of people who are not my kannada ma won't tolla kannada varalla korutho kannadiga ante kannada varalla ni ma won't tolla keya kude magane ikkada jarada royal okay sometimes they give a bad name to kannadigas unfortunately anyway mm. okay manoj pal sir you talked of uh, uh north central east india is bleeding due to unseasonal rain yeah i agree there is there is unseasonal rain there is a possibility that's why i said food inflation may not come down uh i know there are uh, problems sir uh, so finally uh, we can speculate as to what is the extent of the problem but uh, we have to i think uh, uh, we should get official data then we will know exactly how deep is the problem uh, surely there is a problem i am uh, so not so so that's on also then uh, uh, suvas more says if i is not in buying mood uh, as far as i know uh, not as far as i know sorry the data indicates something else i know if i is not in buying mood for last 8 years actually but last uh, 10 12 days even in march itself there have been uh, net buyers uh, so so therefore uh, i think they are buying now whether rotating sector we will know later Uh, but as far as prices are concerned they are going up and what are fi's uh, you know uh, uh, what what are the favorites like uh, reliance or lnt or uh, htc twins they are going up so therefore i am looking more at uh, you know the prices rather than who is buying i'm just guessing that they are buying uh, rahul no, sir sorry, what sorry to interject but vijay last one week they are hugely buying for sure yeah true that's what that is reflected in the numbers no clearly so there is no so on that yeah uh, vinay you got something to say hello yeah vinay i think you need to come close to the mic if you don't mind uh, yes sir uh, are you looking now sir hello vinay i am not able to hear you vinay i am sure the same issue will be with others Yeah, Vina. I think you need to uh, be very close to your microphone, or a little uh, better. Which one is my Pluto device, um, uh, sir? Which is sir? My observation is, uh, if this uh, dollar hegemony got broken out, so then our uh, economy will uh, prosper, and uh, so we can't able to depend on other thing, other people like uh, for a. Uh, uh dollar uh, transactions and all so uh, i hope that there's there's a uh, two possibilities here so fis will uh, invest in uh, india stock market and uh, if they if they are going out uh when the rupee got uh, appreciated so then they will bear the loss right so there's a misbalance in this uh, transaction so so what's your opinion on that sir 
and uh, one more thing uh, there's a brics currency has to be introduced but uh, i hope that uh, china and india should not do the transactions with this uh, currency because uh, china is our enemy nation <laughs> sorry for that <laughs> so what's your opinion on that sir vijay sir yeah see vina i i understand what you are saying see there these are known fears this rupee weakening dollar strengthening uh this uh, hegemony of dollar going this hegemony of dollar going is a very old you know uh, uh debate uh it is like your uh, peak oil debate see in the 80s and 90s we used to read about peak oil that people used to say there is only one big uh, you know uh, oil uh, uh, field in saudi arabia where uh, you know that is now uh, not going to have more than 20 to 30 years of uh, a uh, life span for that oil and once that goes jawar or something it was i don't remember the name of the this one large uh, saudi arabian uh, oil field now from 90 to now we are at 2020 no where is the uh, issue so the oil is still available across the globe and today us is the largest uh, uh, what shall producer of oil russia is i think number 2 or something saudi arabia is not there anyway uh, there may be in the top 5 so so these are these are uh, things which uh, come up for discussion till now nothing has happened which has changed uh, the way global trade is going on so therefore uh, to think that you know uh, that something will happen and we will go into get into trouble i am not able to visualize that as of now uh, we'll see at that point of time see when I, there is no end to our worry we can keep on worrying right now i don't see that as a worry but we have to keep our eyes open it doesn't mean everything is hunky dory never hunky dory anyway as i told you every year there will be one major crisis for which we will think in the globe will go down india will go down and all that i think we are okay see the worst of the times was last year when oil was at 138 i think it went people said go to 200 250 those are the numbers given by goldman sachs kind of guys but there we are stuck at 85 even with their uh, you know uh, opec doing what it did last week otherwise it will get stuck between 75 to 100 in my opinion above 105 i doubt it will go so easy if it goes 105 then we will have to get worried it, it nothing is impossible we should same thing with rupee if it goes to 86 87 in this year the next 3 4 months then we should get worried i don't think it will happen those are not my base case scenario but let us keep an open eye i am optimistic based on whatever data i am able to see at this point and this dollar hegemony in all likelihood will continue for decades it's not for years for decades looking at the current setup of the economies the way the trade is happening globally even if china signs off with uh, with the uae for yuan transactions or india tries to pay uh, russia in indian rupees then also it doesn't really make much of a cut it would be hardly very small percentage of the global trade which is happening so even if it is going to spread it's going to take many 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 years to to kind of uh, have any impact on the dollar yeah i agree with you bread on this this uh, the dollar is you can't wish away dollar so easily Uh, though it may not be as prominent maybe somebody else may try it is it is like the hdfc bank you know everybody says i want to become hdfc bank hdfc bank is hdfc bank like that is something like that i would say so uh, somebody asked me uh, mr kandelwar asked me about insurance stocks see i used to be very bullish on insurance uh, stocks mr kandelwar i was bullish on lic i got bambood uh, gicre i didn't do i mean it didn't give me much money So i really thought uh, the insurance stocks will do very well after the budget but nothing seems to have come in the budget which is making it attractive enough but uh, they could be the target for fi by possibility is there uh, so for me i was waiting for april april has come uh, and the p notes uh, issue i think will dominate i don't know whether it will dominate at least it will be a very important uh, issue in the next uh, few months i feel uh, i am open minded about insurance stocks right now i don't have any in my portfolio i did have these two one is gic and one was lic lic i did badly sorry lic did badly for me gic i made 
some moderate profits and I moved out. Chetan, you would like to say something? Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I have some uh, doubt. Uh, so, participatory notes uh, instantiation, what is the impact on our market? Is it a bullish sign or uh, uh, what can we say? Uh, what will we get from this one? Yeah, uh, Chetan, thanks for that. I've just been explaining participatory notes uh, at this point of time they will be very uh, they will uh, play a very bullish uh, role there is no uh, doubt in my mind about it so it's just a uh, i would say um, you know um, uh, you just have to observe it see when this participatory notes created problem for us was when sebi began to take action after 2006 7 somewhere in that uh, period so after that, they slowly died. Uh, participatory notes are still there, uh, but uh, there are too many restrictions. But now these PNs are coming through the gift city. There, um, you know, there are no restrictions uh, like what they are there were under SEBI. So the rules, I don't know exactly, but I know by and large, the idea was to uh, give uh, FIIs on easy entry uh, with low taxation or no taxation. So that will play a role, I feel. See, it is too early right now. But I was anticipating this to happen uh, soon after the announcement of the budget. Uh, so it may be a coincidence also that uh, uh, the uh, recent uh, increase in FII investment in India, uh, March has been a positive, as I told you, and the last uh, four days of April also have been positive. Probably could be the beginning of the participatory notes coming into India. It will be positive, more or less, but it will it will bring into volatility at higher levels, obviously. Uh, and then uh, some rules and regulations may come, uh, but this time they have cleverly moved out of uh, the uh, under the from under the purview of SEBI. It is no longer under the purview of SEBI, which is now coming through a gift city. Yeah, Nikhil, you would like to say something. Nikhil? Mm, hi, Vijay. So, uh, I really I don't have much uh, knowledge on participatory notes. So, I came into the room uh, more in line with seeing the title, How to Lose Less Money. So, yeah, probably if you have another topic, then I can contribute. No, no. I uh, Participatory notes only just now we talked about it. I started off with uh, How to Lose Less Money by saying that uh, you need to know who you are and what kind of markets you're comfortable with and uh, to understand what kind of market we are in and to trade with the trend and then you select your instruments. So basically, I uh, the question about how to lose less money came about because people are losing heavily and they're not knowing why they're losing and they didn't know how long they will lose. So this was uh, uh, these are the reasons I identified among many reasons and that if you really uh, realign yourselves with these five questions, maybe you'll lose less money, is what, that's how the, um, the introduction to the room was for the first half hour. Only now in the question answer session, we are talking about P notes. Right. I, I get it. Okay. So, yeah, I would agree with that because... Uh, I mean, if I talk about myself, then my journey has been very slow. I think the word arduous, uh, English word arduous is the right word. So first six years of my investing, uh, I just had mutual fund, hardly any stocks, just mutual fund, mutual fund, mutual fund, equity and debt, just uh, kind of learnt the various categories of mutual fund properly, which ones made a lot of mistakes in MF. So after six years of doing MF, then only in 2018, I started uh, putting some money directly into stocks and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, and uh, yeah, so I would say being prudent has helped me a lot because I could see myself that, you know, this daily selling buying is not really giving me much thrill. I'm basically a long-term investor. So I tried also trading a few times and uh, I, in fact, did a trading course last year, but uh, it really doesn't give me that kind of thrill. What really gives me thrill is understanding the business and understanding the industry, understanding the winning, why the why the company needs to be a winner in the 
uh, in its industry and uh, yeah using technicals more as a help using technical analysis more as a help to my fundamental investing so i think that's the space i'm very comfortable in so the trading course last year was very good because it helped me must get some good grip on rsi macd from a long term investing point of view not from a tactical daily buying selling kind of a point of view so if you combine fundamental and technical then it's like uh, very good so i would say that uh, yeah that's one way to be methodical i think that's the my summary for your question be methodical and methodical all the time so that's my answer in a nutshell yeah thanks nikhil for sharing your uh, thoughts and ideas you're right uh, stock market is like life arduous only it is life is also arduous most very rarely we are born with a silver spoon uh, so uh, we tackle life uh, uh, whatever they are uh, in the arduous arduous manner which uh, we have to tackle and uh, um, we if you do it properly i think we come out successful it's good that you are uh, uh, you know you have found out your niche and that's good enough now at the end of the day if you know our niche that's what i was talking about then you know you need you can be a bear full life also and make money you can be a bull full life also and lose money uh, so it, you need to find one niche and then work on it which i think you are doing is what you said you got to oscillators and indicators and i think it will serve you well nikhil i'm very sure i think uh, you'll, uh, you now you're doing on your own i'm sure it will do much better than your mutual funds i suspect so thank you thank you once again nagraja good evening vijay ji ah good evening nagraja sir so i join just now i join just now i don't know uh, uh, but still what what i feel is what i am doing is i can i can tell i will invest only in the blue chip stocks and uh, whatever dip i get i will buy so some reasonable rise i will sell again i will uh, enter again this process this uh, process i am repeating so far i am uh, in a decent success uh, with this i don't yeah. uh, expect more, too much if uh, it uh, it crashes some 5 to 6% 10% maximum i i will sell some uh, some and again i will re enter the uh, second and uh, next dip this is how i am doing no see correct uh, that's a very good uh, way of doing nagraj so you have a method you have a process see most of us including me never had a process okay so i have learned the process after many years actually to be very honest so it is not that uh, it's because i nobody taught me the process see today you when you listen to a clubhouse session or talk to people there's so many podcasts so many places they will they will give you some guidance as to how to go about doing these things we didn't know uh, i at least i didn't know for many many years uh, in fact all these things uh, the social media um, uh, talking discussion has come about only in the last 3 years i would say 2019 onwards so 3 4 years uh, so it's a good thing you have followed a process and if you are happy with your process that's it i mean uh, uh, you will you will get success as nikhil said it was an arduous uh, uh, journey you are yours may be an arduous but still at the end of the day it will be a successful journey only that i am fairly certain because you are satisfied of this right you are not uh, getting uh, dissatisfied that you sold and the market went up and did that and this and all that right many of us are dissatisfied and one more uh, thing vijay uh, i think i am happy whenever it dips yeah that too because i will get a uh, chance to buy yeah that's exactly and i am uh, i am uh, uh, i feel safe when, when, when i when i am buying and dips rather than uh, on rise correct so you are not a momentum trader see there are people who are momentum traders they like action so they will catch a running train you know people like you and me will go to the station one hour before wait for the train and when it comes we will get into the train and that's it you'll go and sit in the seat But there are people who will come, but they will still standing. Only when that uh, that um, the train starts moving, they'll jump into the train. That is a different thrill. All both of us go to the same destination, but we are going uh, uh, safely. We are coming early. We don't want to miss the train. We are sitting and not doing any mischief. The other guys are also enjoy. They think that's a thrill. 
So both of us uh, probably will go to the same destination. Sometimes uh, maybe we may be safer, much safer actually. So as my wife says, why are you buying mangoes uh, when it is 100 rupees? You buy only when it is 50 rupees. So all of us want to buy only when it is 50 rupees, uh, not when you buy it's 100 rupees kg. But people may say, you know, I want to love to eating mangoes at 150 also. So they may buy some uh, at 150 also because they feel that will give them some thrill because it is some expensive from some other place in India it has come. So it's, I think each of them have their style. I think, see, the most important thing is you should be happy with your style and it should be profitable, which you are both. Happy as well as profitable. So I think uh, that's uh, you know, you should be happy and profitable. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Nagaraja. Aman, sir. Uh, yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, great, sir. Great to hear you again. So uh, my only question is, sir. So this time the market is again reviving from the lows. So do you still believe? See, the global queues are not that great. So do you still believe there will be another chance of dip or another good chance of buying again into like large and mid caps? Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Uh, I think I heard most of your son because probably your mic was a little far. See, it is like this, Aman. Uh, the question is, I don't trade in index, okay? So uh, I, though I, I do a lot of research on index, I know my index numbers backwards, uh, all that. Now, there are so many stocks uh, which are at, uh, today we are at uh, uh, 17,500 means, uh, 17,600 means, there are so many stocks which are at uh, 15,000 index, I would say. Not at 12,000 and all which people are saying, but at, I think at uh, 16,000 index. You take uh, this um, pharma sector. It just recently it made a new low. So we are... Uh, we have, in my opinion, we have a long distance to go in uh, pharma, pharma stocks. Uh, so they are not in the index also. Maybe a couple of them are there. Supply may be there. Or Sun Pharma is there. Or Dr. Reddy is there. But, and, or uh, DVs. But they don't have too much of weightage. So uh, if you look at sector, definitely for me, pharma looks interesting. Or take even the big ones like Reliance and uh, this uh, HDFC twins. But in terms of pure valuation, they are at the lowest in a very long time, the price may be higher than what they were last year. But in terms of pure valuation, they are very, very uh, uh, reasonable. There are so many such stocks going around. The mainline indices have gone up because, uh, you see, HDFC twins have gone up, Dever has gone up, um, then uh, Reliance is now going up. So you are feeling that uh, the uh, index has gone up. So can we get a chance or not? I feel the chance available today. I think the chance will be available next week, independent of what index happens. See, for instance, index may uh, have a uh, you know reaction slash correction next week itself. It may have it uh, soon after the Karnataka elections in May. Uh, but there will be many stocks which are available as bargains. The reason why they're available at bargains is many people have thrown away their stocks last month. Last month was the time when people really gave up, uh, which should not have happened. So we are just only 10 days away from the uh, bottom of last month, a fair four percent away from the bottom of last month. So I think it offer uh, in terms of indices, mid cap and small cap. So I think we have enough uh, stocks available, and for uh, for the first time, even the blue chips are available at good rates. I feel like Reliance and the uh, LNTs of the world, and uh, you know the auto stocks, pharma certainly, private sector banks like uh, Axis Bank and HDFC. Uh, so many, many are there. So I don't uh, think one should worry so much about the market index having gone up. I think it's okay. We can't obviously catch it at the lowest. We don't know what is the lowest anyway. Yeah, I hope you got the answer, Aman. True, sir, true. And sir, I just want to share one strategy which I used last year. So when the market was at a peak of uh, when peak of last like three years, so I, uh, I tried to uh, try my luck in gold. So this time gold has even delivered like 28, 29% in a span of like 15 months. So now uh, uh, will that be wise to switch out of gold and get again into equities? Yeah, why I, why, why I'm not supposed to advise directly, let me put it to you in a very indirect manner. See, I'm generally a bull on gold for the last two years. Aman. So uh, I have some gold bees I've kept. Why I have kept gold bees or why I'm holding gold is because see, uh, Gold was a, a relic. Nobody wanted to look at gold for last two, three years. But
but i, I observed that the the central bankers or the uh, governments uh, were hoarding gold so i thought one uh, fine day gold will take off it took a long time it tested my patience in fact last april april 22 2022 i think is when i said we should buy gold i put it into what is called the ugly ducklings portfolio gold and silver and uh, only now it has paid off i feel gold should be there in anybody's portfolio some amount should be there now whether that uh, will drive the portfolio i don't know i i, I don't expect to, it to drive. anyway my proportion to gold is very less but i'm very bullish on both gold and silver going forward now how much it will go i really don't know but it is certainly not uh, uh, worth that 1700 or uh, 1600 or 1800 it is at 2000 no right i think it has got some more distance to go uh, i don't think one should uh, i'm not looking at it as some bearish uh, a uh, phase or it has been overbought i don't think so i think some distance is there thank you sir thank you lot thanks saman arun arun can you hear me sir yes sir yes sir okay i can hear you sir thank you very much sir thank you for your valuable suggestion yeah. welcome welcome it's really really helpful really helpful your experience uh, uh, giving us a lot of uh, knowledge huh? and uh, one uh, one saying is there market will gives money to experienced people and give experience to money people having the money so your experience uh, giving as uh, all uh, array of light uh, so it's uh, usually uh, helpful sir uh, in questions i don't have any questions right now sir but uh, what strategy i am using i can share a uh, few words with you yeah sir. please do that please, please is, do uh, any uh, yeah yes sir sir i usually ship investor whatever the save monthly i am a working uh, working person whatever the savings i do uh, i do 50% in uh, mutual fund ships uh, and uh, remaining 50% in the stocks uh, in the uh, mutual funds i uh, i have uh, index funds uh, one on uh, nifty and one on uh, next nifty next nifty and other uh, three mutual funds i have is one in mid cap one in small cap and one in uh, value fund uh, and it, they we uh, these mutual ships started from almost uh, 10 years sir almost 10 years sir earlier we have uh, uh, this one i have which one uh, index fund started uh, about uh, 2017 i afterwards sir. earlier i have a large cap fund sir so i shifted them because of the cost uh, and uh, what changes made is uh, from 2013 or uh, 14 uh, afterwards uh, i shifted from regular funds to direct funds that's the mutual fund part uh, and uh, all the funds are giving uh, fantastic results sir uh there is no problem with that one uh, and then stocks stocks also i uh, do simple strategy one strategy i have selected two stocks you no know, be 15 20 20 stocks now i have a 20 21 stock i usually select very choosy in the selecting the stocks i doesn't go for the fancy ones and i, I doesn't go beyond uh, uh 200 market cap 200 because i have a large exposure of mid cap and small cap mutual funds so i stick on to the blue chip funds because um, in what happens in the mutual fund they have a compulsion to sell the uh, running stock also because if they go 10% they need need to uh, restrict uh, their upper limit so so i select the uh, blue chip companies in the direct stock portfolio and uh, direct stock in the mutual fund also there is lot of not much excitement so in the stock uh, remaining in the stock gives a little bit excitement also that's another reason to stay in the uh, stocks also 50% stocks uh, i usually uh, what my what my strategy is i uh, selected four five sectors one financials one auto and another uh, um, fmcg and uh, 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 pharma and it these are the five sectors i usually select three or four um, to- in the top three or four only uh, beyond that one i that doesn't go and i i select usually uh, having a good management and all those all the factors and considering and in this five sectors uh, in, I, i think i have uh, no 15 20 stocks i uh, use monthly so what i do uh, usually in the every month this, uh, there may be some se- some stocks or the other in the some sectors always in the value buy Uh, because now pharma is in the value buy value buy uh, so i uh, i choose the pharma some uh, some months or some uh, part of the time uh, bank goes to value buy 
So I select, uh, in that month I choose, uh, because capital is limited now, sir, I savings. So I, I can select one or two stocks only in that month. Uh, so I select uh, on that, uh, and keep on adding this one, because when, so once that sector runs uh, full momentum, my portfolio is already uh, filled with that uh, stocks uh, and giving the more results. Uh. So whichever uh, sector is in the value buy, they keep on adding those stocks. Uh. So after one or two years, usually what happens is sector rotation keep on happening. Sometimes uh, financials do well, sometimes export do well, sometimes uh, manufacturing do well, sometimes uh, 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 what is called uh, chemicals will do. Like, like this happening. I, I, I keep it uh, simple and keep on investing the whichever is available in my value. Okay, uh, this one. So it's giving me the very good results from last uh, 10 12 years also. And the uh, strategy is simple, there is no excitement. I keep it, doesn't keep the and doesn't uh, uh, ask for any suggestions to any uh, YouTubers or uh, some other people because uh, they always give the exciting stock, momentum stock. If you keep on more, uh, select the more exciting stocks, the chances of losing the money is more. Because uh, there's some part of the uh, uh, star, this one, oh, a market is always in the bubble zone. More last uh, than is in the bubble zone. Select that some other, and the market and media and always focus on the bubble zone only. And the retail people they select, keep on selecting the bubble, bubble zone stocks only. And whatever people, uh, they will lose the capital. Your topic is very optimal, and that's why I I want to add two words with you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Arun sir, uh, for the. I mean, I'm really happy that you have gone through, uh, you know, the process. See, finally, at the end of the day, the process is important. So you have take, chosen a process, which means you want to go through the straight and narrow route. You don't want to take undue risks. You want to buy on declines. This is the process. A great investor will have these kind of process. And I'm sure in the next few years, you will be very, very successful. Thank you on uh, explaining the process. Uh, Chetan, you've got something to say. Uh, Hari is the last uh, person. Chetan, you'd like to say something? No, sir. Continue. Yeah. Uh, Hari, you're the last. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Hari. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah you're audible, Hari. Ah. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, regarding this topic, uh, my personal view is that uh, I would be shifting my mutual fund holdings that uh, follow Nifty 500, Nifty 200 to uh, Nifty 50, sir. Uh, I think uh, the uh, fund manager's charge also is very little in the Nifty 50, whereas uh, other funds, they are charging quite high premium. So, how to lose less money? <laughs> I think that is one thing I think I'll be doing this year, sir. <laughs> sir, I have another question. Uh, usually, from your experience, do you think uh, the stocks touching 52-week high will continue to do so? Or uh, is it a fallacy to think so? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. See, lo there are a lot of theories on that. With the blue sky, uh, you know... Uh, factor. Blue sky is basically it is now going to all-time high. So therefore, it will, what is going high will go high. That is the path of least resistance. That is what is the theory. Uh, but if you really go back and look at charts, that is not always true. Uh, obviously, if it is if it is a, a stock, if it is a company, the underlying company is doing very well, then obviously it will keep on hitting newer and newer highs. For instance, Asian Paints used to constantly hit a new high every year. Reliance in the olden days used to do that. But when you when it becomes mature as a company or when there is competition uh, or there is, you know, some other changes in the company, they, they go and expand their company in different fields, uh, those things don't work. So I am not uh, a great fan of these kind of theories about what goes up will go up, what comes down, what is going down will go down. I look at fundamentals, uh, whatever my understanding of fundamentals, uh, and then I look at the story, and then I look at the technicals, and then and only then will I go and invest in a stock. So for me, fundamentals are most important reason for me to invest. So I don't look at just uh, only the price, resistance, support. Those all come later. Because you see, the price is what? It is telling you at that point of time what people think it to be. 
but if you know some change in fundamentals will happen to a particular company uh, or a sector then you know you will take uh, action accordingly you see you take zomato for instance when it opened it everybody piled on it was 74 rupees i think was the ipo price it opened at 112 115 so uh, it it made no sense to buy, buy at 74 forget about 120 and 30 and 40 so uh, but it it kept on going up you know it went to 115 and 20 i was very much bearish on it around 130 but it went to 164 also so let's say somebody would have challenged and gone on that theory that uh, you know uh, the from day one uh, zomato has gone only up so i'll go and buy uh, 140 was the resistance zone it broke 140 went to 150 which is the resistance zone and then went to 160 or something so then what would have happened you would know when to go where to go out because first of all you are buying on momentum you if you look at fundamentals uh, that uh, that share doesn't deserve even 40 rupees or 50 rupees whatever that number is today so so there the fallacy is there so you can uh, got let's say bought at 120 when it were, uh, uh, when it was uh, listed uh, you would have made money till 164 if you are not sold there then you got it below 120 and now to go to 120 looks very difficult so so i don't be i i don't believe in those kind of theories because they are not there is no such rule that you know what is going up will go up and what is coming down will go down, uh, go down at that point of time price is god that's all it is uh, see how people make money like warren buffett or any legendary investors they make money because they anticipate uh, something happening in that company the price will follow once you know something is happening in the company the price will follow so we don't have to uh you know uh try to come out with theories and you are think about you know um uh, i lose less money by going into uh nifty rather than uh, so it's an interesting thing maybe uh, you may want to look at instead of a mutual fund you can look at uh, uh, an etf exchange traded fund because exchange traded fund has got the lowest fees vis a vis an index fund there is an index fund which is investing in nifty there is a exchange traded fund like a nifty bees which is also investing in nifty but if you take the costs the costs of an etf are always lower than a existing mutual fund so you may want to look at that as a alternative for your same vehicle the vehicle is still nifty 50 only so that could be an interesting uh, thing you may want to uh, look at uh, so hari i think i answered your question i think i answered everybody's question uh, let me see whether uh, somebody else is interested gaurav harshan if somebody else interested kindly come and ask otherwise uh, we will uh, close normally we do for 2 hours we are almost there 4 uh, uh, minutes to 2 hours uh, so if there is sir, nobody yeah sir any take on this uh, low wix sir uh, yeah because uh, its uh, premiums are almost uh, running low for option sellers yeah so, so I, you are not there i think i mentioned since wix is completely i mean i disregard wix for the following reasons one is wix is not traded in india unlike wix is traded in us wix is traded in us so there is the the market decides the price of wix so therefore your implied volatility and therefore your premium on options is decided by the market man here wix is not traded so you are the construct of wix may be similar but it depends on your Uh, open interest and anybody can uh, manipulate open interest it is not at the money it is outside o- otm uh, this one it is uh, open interest the way that it is calculated it is manipulatable whether it is manipulated or not i don't know first of all it is not traded so it is it is what is that indicator it is giving i don't know because it is not directly connected to the calculation of that wix okay you are now taking a derivative and calculating that is you are saying this much uh, on the otm then uh, that the calculation you know it is a complex one but it is nevertheless it is uh, uh, it is not the true price whereas in us it is a true price so now you are having wix at 10 so what happened the premiums are all low so who decides that i don't know uh, how it has come there low i don't know because it is no connection to the volatility of the market the market is on its own journey the wix is on its own journey so there is no correlation and there is no correlation i don't want to get into that now the okay, we the no correlation is a given i told you i told you that wix was a product which was introduced by nse in 
nobody traded in that out of frustration nse took away the product it was traded it was a product in in 2014 i remember having gone to that uh, presentation also so i said uh, uh, you know it will be a very interesting product and all nobody bother so now what we will do uh, wix is doing is your your premiums are being controlled by the low wix so i will not enter into this kind of uh, speculative trades in such situation where it's an artificial number so that is why i am slowly getting disillusioned by the concept of options in india uh, because nowadays the kind of people who have entered the kind of strategies which are people are doing and the kind of losses which people are incurring i am uncomfortable entirely with the scenario i'd rather do futures i'll definitely do cash i do mostly my trading in cash because i am basically an investor i rarely do futures but options uh, i have given up in the last 7 or 8 months long answer but this is what it is hari so i can't uh, stop myself from ask uh, uh, now that uh, from july we are going to have a lo- lesser uh, 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 lot for uh, bank nifty so will we be having a mini nifty again sir Ah, very good question. See, Mini Nifty was there. Uh, it was see, NSE has introduced many products and taken it away because uh, you know uh, it, there was no trading done there. So this Bank Nifty lot being 15, see 15 lot looks mini when it was. I think it was 40 was the lot huh? before. I think 40, 25. Now it has come to 15. Uh, I think it was 50 also. I think at one time uh, Nifty lot was 100. I think at one time. Now it is 75. so uh, now uh, it is 50 now, sir sorry 50 uh ah, sorry 50 so see i'm i'm so uneducated because i'm just not looking at those see when we started i think the nifty lot was 100 only that is in 2001 i'm talking about so you see what was nifty then the nifty then if you look at it see when what this how this lot size came this lot size came because the parliament in its wisdom decided that people who trade in derivatives are supposed to be sophisticated traders so only uh, sophisticated traders should be trading which means they should be allowed to trade a larger value minimum 2 lakhs 2 lakhs should be the contract size that is how that that lot size came you know based on the price they divided by i mean 2 lakhs then they found how many shares can go into one contract that is the origin in 2000 2001 around that time when or maybe 1998 if i i'm not able to okay, tell you exact so but that was it so people like you and me all poor investors should never come to derivatives only people who are having 2 lakhs in 1998 2 lakhs was big to invest in one shot in the stock market today what has happened if you look at the um, you know uh, lot size if multiply the value of one contract is 8 lakhs 10 lakhs 12 lakhs 16 lakhs and all that the nsc is supposed to is mandated to keep the lot size equal to 2 lakhs but nobody ask them question they don't bother and people in nsc today will not know also why that lot size is what it is today so so that is the uh, sad part so therefore from bringing down from 25 to 15 uh, if they if this uh, uh, bank nifty goes up to 50000 60000 you see the uh, value of the uh, contract it will be much higher than 2 lakhs so they may bring in see nsc is a money making machine so they will try to entice you with all kinds of uh, things uh, because they know we are all suckers waiting for uh, these kind of uh, products so they may introduce a mini nifty may come but the origin of that uh, lot size is based on the 2 lakh principle they are not change that but nobody follows that no, what it also means is there will be no contract size which will be less than 2 lakhs the value of contract will not be less than 2 lakhs rupees 2 lakhs so uh, so lalis we more than that and also 2 lakhs is now old hat now they should increase it to 5 lakhs or something like so hari i gave the answer to you. thank you thank you yes sir thank you sir so if there are no more questions prakash shri lakshmi amol nagaraja arun vinay and hari uh if there are no more questions from anybody else i think we have reached our time to ours uh thank you once again everyone and uh, uh all i can say is 
find out who you are and uh, do your uh, trading or investing in that manner you will certainly make money when you lose money you lose less money when you make money you'll make more money than normal i, I let me wish all of you uh, all the best and let's hope that uh, this is a good bull market which will last for a reasonable time to may to see that every one of us makes money well, thank you very much uh, and uh, let me end the room good night everyone